My name is Julie Pearson Little Thunder. Today is November 19th, and I'm interviewing Norma Howard as part of the Oklahoma Native Artists Project, sponsored by the Oklahoma Oral Histories Research Program at OSU. <clears throat> We're sitting in Norma's workroom. Norma, your work is really rooted in a sense of place, and it's not just physical place, it's also a place of memory and a spiritual place. I wondered if you could tell me a little bit about your background and your early childhood. Well, um, when I was little, I, uh, I went to a country school. I was just about three miles from here. And I, I went to school with all my brothers and sisters. And uh, I like going to country schools because they're, it just, I don't know, it just got that one-on-one, um, -on -one, you know, uh, but anyway, that's why I got my start. I would go to school and I would see these little kids, you know, taking uh, things to school. And I would, uh, you know, wish I would have it because I didn't have the things that they did. But, you know, I still was a little girl and I still like, you know, you know, like dolls. There's one little girl came to school, little chatty Kathy, and I always wanted, wanted one. <laughs> I remember those. Oh, and I wanted one so bad. So what I did was when I got home, I would draw it. And when I would draw it, it gave me that um, feeling of uh, like I got it. Yes. So that was uh, how I got my start with. And not only that, but um, when I was growing up, I was really shy. And uh, art and drawing was, uh, it was something that uh, I could express myself. So were you um, encouraged by your teachers in school? Was um, your artistic talent encouraged? Not all of them, just one, but that was when I was in fourth grade. Before then, as a matter of fact, I had I had one teacher, you know, she didn't really care. And so, you know, if you have a teacher like that, uh, you don't care. Right. So I, I didn't really, really show my work too much. But as I, I think I was in uh, third, third grade, uh, we had another teacher and she came to school and I was older and um, I was on the chalkboard and I was drawing Indians and uh, <clears throat> she got mad at me and she told me, uh, Norma, what are you doing? And I said, uh, you know, being a little Indian girl in those in the 60s, uh, we were taught not to look at people in the eye. So I just put my head down and I just shrugged my shoulders like uh, I, I didn't know. And then she said, you weren't supposed to be drawing like, you weren't supposed to be drawing uh, what you're drawing. You're supposed to be drawing presidents and stuff like that. And uh, being a little girl, you know, it kind of confuses you because when you're at home, your mother and dad, you know, they let you draw what you want. And then when you go other places, you're restricted to draw what you want. And it kind of confused me, but um, I thought she knew better, you know, so I listened to her because she's my teacher. And it hurt my feelings that I couldn't draw what I wanted. And I drew it in then, you know, in TPs, you know how little <laughs> yeah. kids do. I was drawing it. And uh, and um, that really um, had an impact on me when your teachers tell you not to do something. Whether it don't matter what it is that you do. When you're little, when a teacher, any teacher tells you not to do something, it has an impact on your life. And uh, that really had an impact on me. And for a long time, I didn't draw Indians or, you know, stuff like that because I thought it was wrong. But as I got old, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it, 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 my mother was wondering why I wasn't drawing anymore. And I, and I never really told her. But she just thought, well, she's just growing and going through different phases. So I just let her be. And, she, and my dad let me be. And then um, I eventually, you know, start drawing again. I eventually put that behind me, but it really had an influence, uh, I mean, impact on me, oh, in not a good way. Right, mm -hmm. it really would. Yeah. So, basically, you stopped drawing, period, for a little while. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you basically. remember how long it was? No, I don't really remember, but uh, I was drawing when I was, since I was five, so, you, and, and when I was third grade, I think I was like eight. Mm -hmm. So uh, between five to eight, I was drawing all the time, and then from eight on, I kind of quit a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going back, you know, uh, I, I probably shouldn't have, but an eight-year-old, you know, uh, I mean, it is what it is. Well, yeah, that's mm -hmm. how it impacted you. Um, and I had read that your mom and dad both were very supportive of you. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You 
your yeah. work, and that's, I wonder if you can tell me a little bit about that. That's not always the typical experience of <laughs> any kids who want to be artists. <laughs> well, when I was growing up, we live in a small town, you know, at the time it was like no more than a thousand. But um, we didn't have no um, uh, arts place or where I can look or we didn't have no books. In the, you know, I really didn't think Indian art existed. I was wondering if I'd ever know. seen any. Uh -uh, no. And I, I didn't know until one time my dad took uh, us to um, Five uh, Tribes Museum in Muskogee. And I seen that one painting with uh, Enoch. It was uh, he stuck that knife in it. That I yes. seen that real large one. You go up that stairs, and I, uh, uh, I thought, yeah. And I thought, God, there is an art around, you know. And I think I was like uh, nine or ten at the time. But before then, I didn't know anything about it. an art existed. Um, but it. But after that, um, I kind of. Uh, it just sort of opened my eyes. But, you know, even then, even when I was older, I was still drawing like John Lennon and L Yoko Ono and, you know, like uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Bugs sure. Bunny and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Um, did you speak your language in your household growing up? Um, my mother was uh, fluent in Choctaw, but she can speak some English. You know, she was all right. She had broken English, like, but she was she was all right. She did English pretty good, and uh, she wrote all right. Now my dad, uh, my dad uh, was uh, raised in an orphan, so he had to speak English. So he was, you know, so um, and my mother understood. You know, this was in the '60s. I'm not talking about my brother's sister's time, but my time when I went to school, um, she understood that we had to speak English, uh, but yet. Uh, you know, we uh, most of all about probably half of the time when I was growing up, we didn't have no electricity. So you know, uh, she had to keep us uh, uh, entertained. So she would tell us a lot of stories. Um, my mother liked to talk about uh, a lot of animal stories and stuff like that. But um, that was how I learned the Choctaw, uh, a lot of language and stuff like that. I, to this day, I can understand. But, and she would tell the sto traditional stories in Choctaw. Yeah, yeah, and and she would throw English in there too because she understood that you know we we uh, understood English more. You know, not a lot of people know about the fact that the Mississippi Choctaws had to travel to Oklahoma mm -hmm. to get allotments, and I know that was your grandmother's experience. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, well, actually, uh, my dad's side of the family came in 1830s, you know, during that first okay. removal. Mm -hmm. So they got all the southern Oklahoma uh, land. And my uh, grandma, uh, mm, from my mother's side, uh, they came in 1903, the second removal. But um, <clears throat> how they uh, missed the first removal was uh, her fam her uh, my grandmother's uh, family, uh, they um, hid out in the swamps. You know all those the swampy wow. area. They knew the cavalry would would not uh, go out there and search for them, so they would have to live out there and survive. And um, that's where I, I get all, a lot of my paintings with the uh, the mist and the fog, right. because that's when they did their roamings and hunting during that time. Because before daylight, you know, when it hits, they would do uh, roam and, and uh, do their huntings and, and fishing, and, uh, and then go back. Uh, but and, and not, not only that, but uh, I love I love to do that with my paintings. It gives it that uh, kind of a, a mystery to it's it. It's mystical. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you knew about yeah. what was uh, behind that painting, it's even more. Uh, it 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 uh, you know gives you more. I give you more information on that. Mm -hmm. um, and your grandmother lived to be quite old, so you had a real relationship with her for yeah. a number of years. Yeah. The thing about it, though, she couldn't speak any English. So, um, but, you know, when you're, you know, it, it's like uh, uh, when you can't understand someone, you start looking at their actions. So I would always, uh, you know, I would play outside all the time, and she just lived like, oh, probably about mm, maybe 50 or 75 feet from us. 
but it was like on a hill and she would be in the back drawing water and, and she would have that big old uh, iron pot kettle and cooking out there and she would be doing, you, I could see, she had a real big old porch in the front. She would be sitting out there in her uh, chair and rocking chair sometime and, and, and it was just, or like she, uh, we had a, a family um, cemetery behind our house and she would cut across and go and pick flowers on her way and, and, and when I was little I would watch her could watch her walking towards the field and, and there'd be a big old tree, it's like oak tree. I would look and and look look at her, she'd be sitting under it and by a fence and I don't know what she was thinking about, but in my mind when you're a little girl I was thinking I bet she's thinking about her son and her daughter because they passed away before her and she would go put flowers on it and I would always look at her. And she was pretty a big influence on my childhood, other than my mother. And she was a basket maker. Yes, yeah. Uh, she made basket. Uh, she would uh, go out here, over here at the Arn Bridge, oh, about two, two and a half miles south of us, there's a, like a river bank, and, and they would go, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, cut, cut them up and then bring them home and then split them and then dye them with berries and stuff like that. So, Did she, um, she was aware of you, the fact that you love drawing, I guess. Did you, did you, know, you I don't know. showing her drawings? Or? Uh -uh, no, no, because uh, she died when I was uh, almost 11. And my drawings, um, I don't know, it just, I don't know if she, my mother might have showed her, but I didn't know. Um, but far as I know, uh, she didn't see anything that I, I did. I'm really glad you showed that story about the teacher. And I was kind of wondering if you were aware, and, and I love also the, you know, that the fact that you, you know, you didn't quite have the chatty Kathy, but you could come and draw the chatty mm -hmm. Kathy, and you felt like you had her mm -hmm. in that way. I'm just wondering if you were aware at all of the fact that you had a gift, maybe that some of the other students didn't have. Were you conscious of that at that age? No, or not really. Okay. Uh -uh. No. Okay. Uh, where I see where I'm raised uh, in Stigler, there's not very many Indians around, so it was like. It was like two different worlds for me. When I go home, we would just act, you know, just every day in the life, Choctaw life, and my mother would tell a story and all that, and my dad would come in and, you know, give us little suckers and be, you know, everything was just, <laughs> it was just, it was a, just a good life. And then when I went to school, it was good too, but um, it was more, um, like, uh, I don't know, it's just, I, I don't know what word to call it, but when you're uh, having fun and freestyle at home, then you go somewhere else and you gotta sit there. What is that called? Yeah, yeah. For, uh, well, more regimented. Yeah, they, reserved. They yeah, work. yeah. And, uh, and to a Chuck doll, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's not uh, good. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Can stifle the creativity. And not only that, but sure. when you go, um, you know, uh, like the the Kanima, uh, the name of school was Country School Kanima. And there was few Indians going there because there's a lot of uh, communities around, and uh, there was a few going there. But when I went, Stigler was when it was rough, mm -hmm. because that school closed down. That was when they start closing all Country School, and I had to go Stigler in fourth grade, and that was rough. Wow. It that I mean. Um, it was rough in those Hard days. transition, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it was just me and this other little boy was mm -hmm. in first grade, and then second grade we got two more boys. I was the only girl. Third grade it was two other, three other boys and me, and then uh, and then going to sticker school and there was like twenty five. Right. And there was no Indians there because all of them when that school uh, closed down, uh, most of the Indians went to another school. Mm. And I had to go Stigler. I wanted to go where they want because I had friends. But, you know, the logical thing was I just lived three miles from Stigler. So that's where I had to go. <laughs> <laughs>
You mentioned in one of the articles I read that um, you looked through, looking through a viewfinder just really um, kind of helped you on the path towards you know, a more realistic Oh, Viewmaster. Uh, Viewmaster, view yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, I think, well, I don't know where we got that. I don't know. But anyway, um, we had some, and it was like different countries. Uh -huh. And I would uh, lay out in the back and on the ground and, and uh, you know, look towards the lights, and go like this <laughs> and look. And, and it was like 3D. Wow. And you know how they, they yes. look? At, and, and I thought, God. Little size. It's nice. beautiful. I said, God. You know, when you're little, um, with imaginations, uh, when you see beauty, you just want to be there. And I wanted to be that one place. I said, oh, I wish I could be that place. And, you know, even growing up, if I can't be there, um, I can draw it. Right. I have that power. And uh, that that's the thing, that's, the, to me, that's what, to me, that's what art is about. Because, see... I'm not very uh, around Indians hardly. There's not very many Indians here, and I remember when I went my first um, Labor Day. It was at Tuscahoma. It was in '76. My brother said, "Yeah, there's this place they gather every year," and I thought, "Wow, you know, uh, I like to go." And it, you know, it was over the mountain, Sam was mountain, and you go over those <laughs> other hills. It's telling. You. But anyway, when I went, I, it was just like. It, it was just like, I don't know, it just, it was like, it was a place that was fun and somewhere to go and every, in, a lot of chapters gather and, and it was just, a, it, I, what, after that weekend, it's in Labor Day, after that, um, I never was the same person, never wow. was safe. It, it kind it, of, yeah, it had an your... impact on me more than the teacher did. Wow. It it had an impact that, uh, hey, there's a lot of them look like me, you know. Right. And right. I look at myself and I, I'm, not, I'm not so bad after all, you know. Wow. And um, so there were some dances. They had some traditional yeah, dances. Yeah, we had like, uh, we don't have like powwow, but it's like right. social dances. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Was that your first time seeing social dances at Tuscahoma? Yeah. yeah. First wow. Time. First yeah. time I've seen it. Right. Yeah. First time I've seen it. So, did you see any Indian Indian art there too? You no, no, they were. Uh, uh, there's not very many Choctaw artists at that time. Uh, they were doing like beadwork and uh, those God's Eye. You mm -hmm. know, those God. Remember where everybody was doing that in those <laughs> in the seventies? <70s. laughs> Uh, you know, remember. you know, you know when you, they're made with yarns yes, and stuff yes, like that. Everybody was doing that, and those dream catchers. <laughs> yeah. So, you did, I guess, your first watercolor at age fifteen. Yes, Is that, right? that was in '74. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the circumstances and what what you painted? Um, well. Um, uh, I tell people, every, uh, you know, like I have collectors tell them, asking me, uh, uh, why watercolor? It's the hardest medium. <laughs> and I said, well, the Ben Franklins we had, that's all they had. So whatever they had is what, you know, I, you know, but, um, <laughs> you know, those little tray of pallets? Yes. And I used to buy that in the um, poster board. You know, those thin ones? Right. Oh. <laughs> mm. But that, that was what I uh, started with, and... Uh, <clears throat> it was frustrating, because... Yeah, it was frustrating, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I could not get my painting to be smooth. Mm. You know, because I, I like to do a lot of sky. Right. You have streaks. <laughs> you have streaks. Oh. <laughs> but you just kept working um, on watercolors. Yeah. Did you ever... Um, did you give them away to family? I'm kind of wondering, you know, before you entered the art world professionally, mm -hmm. was your mom, like, hanging them up in the house? Were you just you kind know, of keeping them? Yeah, I tell people that's my first go. It's not Santa Fe Indian Market or Red Earth or Herd Museum or any of the galleries. My first, um, uh, and I was 15, my first 
uh, what you call a, a thing I wanted to do was to hang it in the living room. I see. That was all. That was all my goal was. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know all this other stuff, so if you don't know all that stuff, you don't have that kind of goal. Right. But I just wanted my mother and dad to hang it in the living room. <laughs> and they did. They did. <laughs> many of them. <laughs> Actually, not many, because I didn't do many. Mm. I wouldn't show them. I would just uh, have it in a little uh, paper. I would buy those uh, typing paper, you know. Those yes. Things? And I would draw on that and throw it away or put it in my little, I had one of those discs like that. And uh, throw and you know just keep it and and uh, never did take it in and present it to anybody. So they they didn't know what I was doing. She was too busy babysitting <laughs> her niece and nephews. I mean uh, grandkids. Right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna move forward a little bit. Um, it, this art is always a two-person business, and I'm wondering when and uh, where you met your husband, David. Oh, um, well. Um, I was a uh, 19 year old at the time. Well, it was a little bit after my dad passed away. Uh, my d dad passed away <clears throat> in 77, and uh, he was my first, uh, uh, what do you call a uh, person? Uh, yeah, he, he because I never had an art show before then, and he went and showed my art at the reunion day up here, Stigler. And uh, oh yeah, and cool. oh that was nice. And at that time it wasn't no cool though because I was so mad. I was, I was thinking <laughs> to myself, if he he takes that up there and then people's see this is my really th real thoughts. Um, people's gonna make fun of it, and I was thinking, why does he want to humiliate me like that? And to him it wouldn't. But at that time, I thought, why does, why did he won't do that? And I said, no, I don't think he means to do that. I guess he just thinks that I'm good. But, but that's, that's kind of, you know, around our house. I'm good around my family. But let's just leave it there. You know, we don't have to take it out and and have people uh, uh, look down on it because it was special and sacred at the house. And let's just leave it there. But when he took it out there, like I said, it, that um, he was my uh, impact um, of that. I'm going back to my family. But um, anyway, after he passed away, um, uh, he went to this church only way. It was Indian church. And uh, after he'd gone, you know, you mourn. And with Choctaws, we mourn. Our mourning is when we uh, mourn for a person, it's forever. It's not, you know, everybody say, oh, give it a year and you'll be all right. With us Choctaws, it's forever. And uh, anyway, we went, to where I wanted to know who's this person, who, who, what's, what, you know, this church, uh, what kind of church was it that he liked and went. So I started going there, and that's when I met David, my husband. He was going there. So that's how we met. <laughs> <laughs> that's a neat story. And, um... I understand as you were dating, you, you sort of had one, um, you had a question or you, you sort of told him about a certain position you had about place. Oh, yeah. Do with place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, when, when, you know, we was seeing each other and going to church together and all that. And I think he wanted to take it a little step further. And he said, how would you like, you know, live together all the time and all that? And I was thinking, was, well, see, you know, you know, in those days, uh, when I first went on my date with David, uh, my mother wanted my brother to go, <laughs> and my brother did not want to go. He's just uh, two years younger than me. He said, "No, I'm not going. I'm not going to go with him." And he, did. my mother tried to convince him he he didn't want to go, so he didn't go. But anyway, um, um, I I I told my husband. I said, you know, he just sort of kind of asked me and. And I knew what he was saying, but I said, uh, well, if if we do, you know, live together and get married, I said that. Uh, and I was just embarrassed to even say that married. You know, I don't know. I, I just, It was just in that time where, you know, things wouldn't talk about like. But I said that um, uh, I want to live in Stigler. I don't want to live anywhere else. And he said, okay, that's good. I'll live in Stigler. And I said, I don't remember now, I don't want to live anywhere else. The Stickler's where I want to live. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've been living Stickler all my life. 
Uh, I read that you worked a nine to five job for a number of years, uh -huh. and then the company moved to Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, when you were working that straight job, did you occasionally paint on the side? Not really, because I had a little boy, and uh, uh, and <clears throat> and you know when you're away all day uh, working, and there's a lot of time we work uh, overtime and Saturdays. So when you get home, uh, you spend time with your son, and I would take him, uh, you know, and and take him parks or somewhere and buy him Star Wars stuff, you know. And that's where I'd spend all my money on, on him. <laughs> but you spend your time with him, and I really didn't have time for myself. Uh, and at that time, it was just, uh, it was just what I wanted to do because, uh, you know. I didn't have much time at home, but I didn't. There was a time where I didn't paint. Uh, uh, let's see, from about around '84 to '93, I didn't hardly paint anything. Uh, I might have drew a little bit for him, you know, uh, drew little uh, cartoon characters and stuff like oh, that. Okay. But uh, let's see, from '84, about nine, almost ten years, I didn't do nothing. Right, just spend that time with your mm -hmm. son. Yeah. But then there was a change when that company um, folded. Uh, what what happened? Well, um, I was working, actually I was working in a sewing factory and uh, they were going to shut down in 93. Yeah, 93 and uh, oh, this, is, this was another time where I was thinking uh, what kind of job am I going to have? I quit school and I just went two months of freshman year and uh, uh, high school and uh, I thought, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Sewing so factory was my life. Well, I guess I'm just going to stay home and take care of Daniel and, uh, um, you know, we're just going to have a hard time but uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, so I thought. <clears throat> I thought, you know. So my, uh, I was getting unemployment, and then my employment was running out. And uh, I had a dream one night. Um, you know how sometimes you wake up, and I was sleeping, and I woke up, and I heard my dad said, uh, he, uh, it was his voice. Uh, he said that uh, you need to paint. That's what you're. That's what you're good at. That was what you're meant to be. And I woke up, mm -hmm. and when I woke up, I mean, I was sweating and everything, and I thought, God, that was my dad telling me that. And I said, that was a good dream, because any time you dream about your family members is good. And I said, that was a good dream, but what he said wasn't good. And I said, <laughs> because uh, I don't, I, you can't make no money on art. Um, and at that time, I wouldn't go in anywhere. I never showed anywhere. My dad was the one that showed my first, and I, I, and then, but however, I was going to a stickler. You know, we had like a, um, a reunion day, and they had a Christmas show, and I would take my work here. I see. But they were selling real cheap, you know, and there was I wasn't selling that good. And this is prior to um, the the sewing job going away. This yeah. Just I did most of my painting when I was off, when I was getting unemployment and I didn't know what I was going to do but uh, um, just to uh, stay at home. But then I thought, well, you know, I might can paint. You know, I thought, well, if I sell a painting for, you know, like $20, I can buy groceries for that week or something, you know. Right. And my standards never was high. So you just kind of started out slowly, just um, yeah. with your first, uh, did you wait for another um, stickler days or did you look for a little booth show or how did, I didn't how go did anywhere else. Of, I didn't okay. go anywhere else other than stickler. I see. Uh, yeah, I was just, uh, like I said, I wasn't one of these artists that uh, at that time where I just, uh, wanted to be out there where I'm an artist, you know, I, I'm, I wouldn't want to, I'm still not like it in some ways. Um, 
I don't know. I just. <laughs> How did you find out about the Red Earth Show? Actually, it's my husband. No, wait. We went one year in ninety. Uh, it was in ninety three. We went, and uh, I didn't sell any. I mean, I wouldn't sell anything. I was just going just for you right. know, just looking to look around. Yeah, and I was looking at few. And Paladin Roy. Yes. He really. Uh, he re I liked his work. That's wonderful. Yeah, I liked his work because it was realistic and real Indian feeling. You know, you can look at a, pe in a painting and know an Indian did that. And that's what I like. And um, so I looked at that and I thought, wow, he, he, and he was really friendly and everything. And uh, But uh, that was my first... Uh, going to a show with my eyes. I was just like a kid in the candy store because I said, God, look at all these artists, Indian artists around here. And at that time, uh, I looked around and there was part of me, see, I'm a positive person in a way and I'm the negative person around. The positive side of me said, God, I'm just as good as these. And then the negative side of me says, I'll never get in a show. So I had both of that on me, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow you decided to go ahead and enter in 98, is that right? No, 95. 95? Yeah, David, uh, that next year, he said, you ought to try to get in here. I said, David, they don't want my kind of art here. Well, it was, uh, uh, so, so the, uh, you know, to make a long story short, um, I, I said, well, I'll go ahead and, you know, you have to uh, send in those uh, 35 millimeters. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what that was in those days. You know, I think, so I, we went to Walmart and they explained it to us. So I uh, got a photograph and just took a picture of my paintings. And then they send it off. In those days, they send it off. And, uh, and the deadline was so-and-so time, and I didn't make it. I didn't make it on the deadline, so I called Red Earth, and I don't know who that person was, but I'd like to thank them. I don't know who that was, but uh, they said, well, we'll give you a little time. So as soon as it came in, I mailed it off and sent it to them. And, you know, it was like, oh, about a month and a half later, um, you know, I went out there and checked mail, and it said Red Earth. And I said, oh, everything went through my head like the negative part came in. I said, well, they're going to say you can't get in and your work ain't good and all that. And I thought, well, I don't know. I just, I'm not even going to look at it. And then my <laughs> curiosity got the best of me. So I said, oh, God. I said, oh, I'm going to get it anyway. I got it and looked at it and I said, congratulations. You've been and I jumped up and I screamed. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm like, and I got on the phone. I called my brother. He's the first one because he's my uh, biggest uh uh, you know, other than my dad, uh, uh, you know, someone, somebody that had my back on Your everything. Fan, yeah. Yes. And I called him up. And, really? Yeah. You mean that show we went, you know, he, uh, matter of fact, in 93, he came with us. He was, it was me and my husband and my son and my brother went. You mean that Red Earth show? Oh, man, that's good, you know. <laughs> then I called David and woo and all that. And then anyway, I thought to myself, then the negative jumped in again. And, uh, you know, it was the same room, and I came in, and I said, <clears throat> what if I go and um, no one buys my work, like here around here? And I said, oh. But I thought, well, nobody's not going to know. It'd be our little secret, you know. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> Who's going to tell anybody? And then David went around, Stigler, and, you know, he works at Walmart, telling everybody, and the word got to the newspaper office, and then they want to interview me. <laughs> and then wow. well, they interviewed me, you know, so and all this and that, and, and I thought, oh, oh, and then uh, we were on our way, and we were going to a they, I, uh, um, Red Earth, and then we were on our way, and they was having like a little show in at Philbrook, and all uh, oh. Red Earth participant can. You know, it would. I wasn't any special, but I thought I was special because, <laughs> they, you know, Phil recorded me. You know, I mean, it was open invitation to every all red earth. So anyway, we were going, and I, um, and we were going, and our car broke down. It broke down at Muskogee, and and I thought, well, that was a sign. It was a sign. You go home. 
And I wasn't even going to go Red Earth because right after that Philbrook, we were going Red Earth. You know, it was a sign for me not to go Red Earth. So um, I said, David, this is a sign. And David said, oh, you don't know. Yeah, yeah that's a sign, I know. And uh, so um, he said, I know I have that receipt. I can get another one. He looked in the government compartment. He found it. I told you I had it here. <laughs> so he went in there, and we just had $135 to our name. So I know that's not much, but, you know, I was we was going to eat on that and everything. Right, and we right. were going to stay with my sister's mother-in-law. But anyway... Uh, he found that, and he got in the car, this was in June, it was kind of getting hot, and he put it together and all that, and fixed it, and, and he said, go in there and kick it over, and I went in there and kicked it over, and it didn't do nothing. He said, wait, and, and I said, oh, I don't know why he's doing that, we'll just go home. We, we, I ain't got no business being over here like that, we don't need to go red or shoot, just go home and relax, I thought. So and then he said, kick it over again, and I kicked it over again. It started, woo, and he was happy, and I said, oh, no. So, you know, because I don't like that pressure of let down. Right. Of us are, I don't know right. about, I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for other artists, but, um, you know, it hurts our feelings for people to not, you know what yes. I'm saying. Yes, yes. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, to make a long short story, we went to Red Earth, and um, that was when I... Um, won a first place in watercolor. So you were you went ahead to the banquet dinner, which not all the artists, you know, sometimes you don't uh -huh. go to those. Um, but you went ahead, and what happens? Well, when I went to Red Earth, um, I submit my paintings, and uh, I uh, I was looking at other people's art, and I said, um, no one's doing like what I'm doing, you know, like everyday life and and you know, that kind of style, and I thought, well, it's kind of different because everybody was doing, like, mystical stuff and teepees and things. I mean, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong getting it set, but it's just not what I do. Right. But mine was different, and I knew it, but um, I thought, well, I'm already here, so I might as well uh, do it. And that morning, it was uh, really uh, thundering and lightning and everything that morning, and it woke me up, and I got up and thinking... Uh, well, I'm going to go anyway, you know. I didn't really know any artists there. Uh, anybody that wasn't in Oklahoma today, I don't know, in other words. Right. Because that was the only magazine that I uh, uh, seen. And uh, if you were in Oklahoma today, I knew you. <laughs> and there was this one magazine I got. It was uh, Benjamin Merlin and... Uh, uh, Dan, not, uh, I knew Dana Tiger, and but anyway, there was this one magazine I can't. And you know, I was going through my uh, uh, books earlier, and I seen that magazine. It was 90, 1990. But anyway, um, Did I you went buy it for the art because you because of the art coverage. No, uh, oh. uh, sometime well, my dad was a house painter, and sometimes people would give him books, and there was in in uh, Oklahoma today, and I seen that, and I kept it. You know, I just like. Uh, you know, right. and, but anyway, I was there and I, I think, oh, there's Benjamin Harjo. He looked like he did in that magazine. You know, he had this little beret hat. And I saw Dana Tiger, and, and uh, I didn't see your husband though, at the time. But anyway, I didn't know anybody. And I said, and David had to go pick my son up, so he wasn't there, and it was just me. And I thought, God, here I am. Well, I heard all these people, and I'm by myself. And I'm, I'm the kind of person that don't go anywhere by myself. But I had to that day because David uh, Daniel was pitching a game before and his coach was going to take him to Shawnee and David was supposed to meet him. But anyway, I was there sitting there and uh, looking at all the artists. And I was looking up at that chandelier and, uh, uh, and uh, in that great hall, it's called. And um, I was sitting there and looking and I was thinking, boy, wouldn't it be good if they called my name? And I thought, and I shook my head like, you don't need to think like that. So they called a third, and the, and then when they called a third, I said, well, there it goes. So I said, well, I'm just here for the donuts anyway. You know. <laughs> so I was just sitting there. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody there. And That's I just, hard. Yeah, it, 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 it was, but it wasn't hard. The reason why it wasn't hard because nobody didn't know me anyway. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I just said, if I didn't win, who cared? 
You know, nobody right. didn't know me. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So it's got its good and bad. But anyway, I was sitting there, then second, and then first come along, and then uh, I already was not thinking about that. I was just looking around and think about what I'm gonna have for supper, you know. And uh, anyway, I was looking at the chandelier, and then they said first place, and they said Norma Howard. And it was just like surreal. I, I sat there and I put my hand down like this, down my legs. And oh golly, at that time, um, all those years, you know, all those drawings, that teacher, what she said, uh, me being, you know, just a home person. You know, I've never been to Oklahoma City before that day. And I, you know, I don't go far from my home. And, and being by myself, I just I just put my hand inside of my legs and nobody knew me, so nobody was looking at me. So um, that one guy was sitting next to me. And he thought I was sick or something. And I, I ain't joking, I got sick. My heart just fell to my toes and my knees were knocking. And that guy said, you all right? And I said, yeah. I went, I shook my head, yes. And he said, uh, uh, you know, um, you need help or anything? I said, no, I just won. Oh, he said, well, girl, get up here and get your award. And I I got <laughs> up, and um, I could not walk. And I walked up here. You know that guy that always wore that uh, cowboy hat yes. and all those uh, jewelry? He uh, stood there and looked at me, and, uh, and Betty was there. Betty. Price. Yeah, I didn't know her the at the time. Council. Yeah. And uh, I went up here and got the ward and down everything, and I was crying because, um, you know, all the, you know, my uh, uh, little hometown girl, you know, uh, went to a show like that and uh, went awards, and uh, when, I, when that first place, it was just too much for me to handle. Then I got thinking about my family and how the hard time they had and how we come out from nothing and, and all that and all that you you have all that built up in you and I uh, cried and I wish I wish I could go back at time I wouldn't have cried but it was just I, I could not hold back I That's could, how I, felt. and I hated myself for that I'd go back at time and wish I didn't but you know it is what it is well I think it's you know it's very moving I mean the the um, as you say to have come up the way you did and had that experience in school with your art and mm -hmm. then, um, yes, and so I thank you for sharing that. Um, plus it came with a monetary award, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know that day I took Did you her... open that envelope right away or? Huh, no, I'm not going to let see people see me open any kind of thing. No, but um, when I sat down, people were passing me notes. Uh, where's your booth at? <laughs> And I thought, one, well, this is good. And another one came, and another one came, and because uh, there were collectors sitting in there. Too. Yeah, and I guess they go all the time, and they knew that I was new. Right. And um, right. Uh, when I got to my booth, uh, uh, well, first after that, after that, I called my brother again. I got on the payphone, and um, and I said, uh, Ted, and he said, Yeah, and he said, uh, I said. Uh, Guess what? <laughs> and he said, what? And I said, I won first place. Oh, <gasps> really? And you know, though, here's the, here's the special part about that. He wanted to know, he had this plan too. He wanted to know when was, oh God, I can't cry. Okay. He wanted to know what time I was gonna get to board. Because he wanted to play his Flute. I know it just sounds silly, but he, he wanted to know what time. At, at that time, I said, I think it's going to be around uh, 12 o'clock, no, what, 12 o'clock. And he said, I want to know. So he was playing it flute at the time for me. And all my family around here was doing something special for me. Um, that I didn't know, but he and I said um, I went first. And anyway, he said, um, "Yeah, I just got to playing my flute." And, and I said, "Really?" And he said, "Yeah." And he said, "It was it was for you." And, 
And I thought, golly, wow. I said, really? They said, all that? <laughs> I, I was really happy and everything, but, you know, it was good to know that um, your family matched yes. up. Yes, yes. What wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, support. And all those thoughts and prayers for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you've uh, won a lot of awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've gone to a lot of other shows. Yeah. Um, what was it like going to Santa Fe Indian Market for the first time? Well, um, during those time, I really didn't know anything about Santa Fe Indian Market. Um, this one, uh, the president of Santa Fe at that time was um, Paul Rainbird, and he came up my booth and uh, he he uh, wanted me to get in and, and at Red it, Earth. Yeah, and it was in '96. Mm -hmm. This was a year later though, because the first uh, Red Earth I was telling you about was in '95, and this was in '96, and um, he wanted me to go, and I didn't even know him, and I said, uh, "Yeah, it would be good," and, but it was too late because that was in June. And the Indian markets in August. So the next year, uh, he said, "I want you to go and and all that." So I went and I got got a booth. And he said, "Did you fill out for the fellowship?" And I said, "I don't know what that is." And so he sent me that, and I filled that out and won the next year, which was in '98. Uh, but um, it was a real good show, you know. It was a, a lot of other um, artists that oof, there were a lot there. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, that's kind of amazing because, uh, you know, you have to apply sometimes several years in a uh -huh. row to get in. But he knew he was waiting for you to apply. Yeah, and yeah, was he was waiting. <laughs> what was the fellowship for? Was it for anything specific? Or uh, was it, 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 they choose, I think, like, choose like eight or nine every year. Um, some Someone that's uh, up and coming. Right, and so it's not for a project in particular. Or like uh, any work on your studio or anything, it's just well, a, a uh, recognition. Of yeah, it's recognition of uh, you being an artist, and then if you win the prize, what what uh, what are you going to do with the money? You know, yeah. research and right. travel to your uh, homeland or the. What was your proposal for the fellowship? Uh, it, you mean what did I write? Mm -hmm. I said that I was going to go to Mississippi and and do a lot of research and take pictures and because uh, I. Uh, well, I was Mississippi before, but not as an artist. It was just uh, to, uh, you know, go at the World Series, stickball and all that. But uh, I was good. And I went to the Nile Oh, so you played. No, I don't play. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't play. I like to watch them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So but, uh, you proposed to go to Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what was that like? That uh, it was good. I went. I went there and uh, sit, uh, stood on the mounds. You know the mounds that was there like over ten thousand years yeah. ago. Uh, There's a Choctaw word for it. Uh, uh, once you go there, you, you, isn't it? yeah. Once you go there, you, it's another one of those places you go that you're never the same when you leave. Mm -hmm. uh, the Choctaws, what we believe in is. Um, uh, when we go, um, we uh, we get a bag and we take some of the uh, earth, the soil off the mounds, around the mounds, mm -hmm. and uh, when we come back to Oklahoma, we sprinkle it on our uh, front yard lawn to give us that connection. Mm. That's neat. So you did a few. Um or you sort of started exploring some more Mississippi kind of landscapes after that, or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I do a lot of that. Influence. Yeah, I mean, you can see my paintings now, and you'll see a lot of swampy areas and and w women with uh, burden baskets and uh, uh, fishing holes around there, and and uh, the cotton fields and the uh, sugar cane fields and all that uh, landscaping. I. Uh, use all that, and of course Oklahoma, because that's where I'm from. Well, I was thinking about um, what I read um, that you sometimes get um, so there's so much creative energy at Indian Market that'll it'll inspire you to go and 
you know, my husband will be like trying to finish a painting, but I guess you'll go and sometimes start a painting while you're at market. Not necessarily to put it in the booth, but just because it's very stimulating. It is. It is. You know, uh, uh, the thing about uh, uh, artists, well, you don't even have to be an artist. My sister's like that. She's not an artist. She makes Halloween costume for her grandkids, <laughs> and it's that deadline. Mm -hmm. She'll work all night. It's it's that <laughs> deadline. It's it's it gives you that uh, I don't know what is it called a rush. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's. I told my sister. I said, now you know how what I go through with in the market. <laughs> she said, I know. I I didn't realize that. You know, and it's it, it's adrenaline. Yes. It's it's fun. Yes. You're in a, a perfection mood where you want to do it good, but you got a deadline. Right. And it pushes you, and I love it. <laughs> I love that push. I, you know, I, I live off of that. As long as you have a driver, right? Yeah. <laughs> Someone else. Yeah, David, David, David's a good driver, by the way, my husband. <laughs> uh, you got um, gallery representation uh, in Santa Fe at, at the Blue Rain Gallery. Mm -hmm. And um, you had your first solo show there in 2007. Yeah. Um, how many paintings did you do for that show? And was it kind of, you know, sometimes that, that's a big step to have mm -hmm. a solo show. Mm -hmm. I think I had about, uh, I think I had about 15, something like that. There was like maybe three or four that was kind of small miniature, but most of them were like uh, probably about 12 by 16 to 18 by 24 that's, image. That's a lot of work. I, well, I worked because uh, I knew, uh, you know, the ahead of time, mm -hmm. what uh, the deadline and all that. And uh, so, like I said, I'm good at uh, <laughs> deadline. Yeah. But yeah, I had that many, but I had, plenty of time to work for that. And was it, did you feel a little bit, were there any special challenges? I mean, I rem I know that Merlin's first gallery show, it was different from a booth show, because I think there's a certain psychology of, I think he was kind of worried about, was he going to pull it off? I, and I think he still sometimes with a solo show, uh -huh. it's not like when there's other artists hanging in there. You know, I know. Kind of... I know. It, when when uh, when uh, all the collectors, you know, they're there for you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And exactly. when they don't come, it's also because <laughs> you know you too. So it, it it's uh, in between, but um, you know the uh, Blue Rain they advertise real good and they have this uh, quality uh, at at their uh, level. Right. Uh, so people knows, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you fit right in there. I, I understand you did some illustrations for a book called um, The Choctaw Road. What was that like, doing illustrations for a book? Actually, that painting wasn't done for that image. Okay. I, so you just did the cover art and no and well art. on that one I was just doing my work like I always do and then the man that bought the original he bought the original and then uh, oh about a year and a half later uh, he he wouldn't know if he can use that original I mean for his book I see so it wouldn't. It wasn't planned that way. No, it wasn't planned that, uh, way, no, it wasn't planned that yeah. way. It just so happened they were walking. Right, right. And, but no, <laughs> I, it's very rare that I do any kind of a, a work that is for that purpose. Other than that Choctaw book, you know, there's five in a series. Mm -hmm. That one was only one that I've done where um, you had to read it and then figure out uh, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Um, what was that, the name of that book? Uh, well, there was five in the series. series. Yeah, there was one, Stomach Ache Tree, uh, the P Pashofa Pole. Uh, I can't even think of the rest of them. But. Are they children's books? Or yes, they they're children's uh -huh. books. Yeah. yeah, that's neat. Yeah. Cultural books. Yeah. Um, I know that watercolor is your primary medium. Like you said, it's just, you know, notorious for being hard. <laughs> 
but I want I have you to pick a hardest medium. <laughs> have you ever been tempted to experiment with another media? Or? Yeah, I did as okay. I got older. Um, I would, uh, I don't know how I got my hands on uh, oil. Well, see, my dad was a, a house painter, and uh, sometimes I would paint with his uh, paints. And then sometimes people would give him a... Uh, little tubes of paint, and I would uh, paint with it, but uh, I guess I just, it, there, a lot of them were kind of empty. Right. So it just, I don't know, it just didn't. It didn't appeal mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Right. No. Right. It's probably a good thing health-wise. <laughs> do, <you, laughs> do you use um, board now, acid-free board sometimes, as well as watercolor paper, or... What materials? Um, I use uh, arches, uh, watercolor paper. Um, I like arches because when you paint on it, it, it like, uh, it like, uh, I don't know, it's rich and, and, and it like soaks it up. Right. It's not like a layer. Right. You know, like gotcha. if you paint over a, a wood furniture and it's got a varnish on it, but when you paint another painting, paint on it, it sort of peels and mm -hmm. it don't soak in. It's it's like that. How about um, format? Do you do portraits very much? Um, just kind of head and shoulder things, or are they mainly landscapes with no, full figures? Yeah, mainly I, It's very rare that I do. And... I noticed some paintings in one of the magazines that had a different look for you because they um, seem to have kind of a no background, a bare foreground, mm -hmm. this kind of interesting um, look and I didn't know if you've kind of been, and it reminded me of like Jerome Tiger, or some of the more historical painters where they, you know, still yeah. had that kind of bare ground what thing. What painting was it? Um, I believe I saw it in the in Oklahoma Today, uh, but I'm, I'm not, I can't remember exactly. I just wondered if you were kind of exploring that or it was just something that happened. Um, I think one of them had some kids eating watermelon. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the images. But um, the focus was really on the sub. Mm -hmm. It worked nicely to focus you on the subjects mm -hmm. and you didn't get lost in the landscape at all because there wasn't. Well, when that happens, um, <clears throat> it's usually that I got to put a lot of work out. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> I understand. If it that. was up to me, I would landscape everything, but I'm limited, you know, like, uh, like, uh, some, in some gallery, I mean, in the gallery I'm in, you know, they want so-and-so painting. Right. So, if I put a lot of landscape in, I'm not going to put so much paintings in. Right. That's why that. Okay. Okay. Uh, to me, I think, I think there's nothing better, and I think Merlin thinks the same way. I don't know, I can't speak for him, but for me... I think I don't think there's nothing better than seeing an ending in a landscape in a in in their um, uh, uh, native uh, homeland. There's nothing more uh, sacred or or uh, uh, special. Right. It, they just uh, blend in together. They you know I mean I can look out here now look outside and uh, I know I don't see it. But I can look at some creeks or something like that. I can look at, and I could see an Indian family out there speaking Choctaw. No political thing around them. No, no uh, influence. No, nothing corrupted. Uh, it's just Indians being Indian in their home. Uh, uh, their home, um, you know, feeling and spirit. But being out in public, I, I think there's nothing more sacred than that. Is being yourself, you know, no influence. Oh, you know, I know me. I, you know, when I um, go places or something like that, I say, oh, well, uh, white people. Are... Oh, <laughs> okay. I'll say, oh, white people are looking at me or something like that. And you get kind of, or you got to change your ways. You know, like what I was saying about the school. Right. Right. You're just free spirit at home, right. and and nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, you just be yourself. And then when you go somewhere else, you got to. That's not good for Indian. It, it's not good for Indian. It, I don't know. It's just not good for Indian spirit. It's like an animal. You know, like animal lives around and 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 um, 
have their, uh, you know, have their own place to sleep and, and all that and, you know, be with their, uh, you know, uh, babies or whatever. And, and then when they get around someone that don't like animals, they got to change or they got to leave. And that's not natural. Uh, that is, uh, you know, is what I'm talking about, Indians, is, um, is you got to change yourself for people. And uh, now, though, as I got older, um, I ain't going to change for nobody. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> How important is it for you to paint your own tribe? Oh, it's, it's, so, it's so important that it's just, it's not even funny. I mean, I, I, um, I don't know, our rich history, um, it, it's just, I don't know, you know, when I was telling you, I was always, I was always uh, the kind of person that, uh, even when I was little, mm, even though I wasn't living around Indians, even though I went to school and I was um, what they call nowadays bullied. Mm. But um, even though all of that, I was uh, always proud of being Indian. I mean, I could tell you incidents, you know, I was a teenager. I was 14 year olds. No, 15. You know, when I was telling you I started painting, right. I was so proud of being an Indian. And around here, it, that is not, um, it was not seen or done around here. I mean, what little few Indians were girls around here, they were dyeing their hair red. Some of them were, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I never dyed my hair red or nothing like that. Uh, actually, I never dyed it. <laughs> but anyway, um, I went to, we had a 4th of July. I told this to Marcus Ammerman and, and he, he almost cried, but it's a true story. I I went to, um, we had a 4th of July, and uh, my dad and me went, and and uh, I got into beadwork too. That's when I started doing beadwork, and I did a, a little, uh, those little round ones. Oh, yeah. I, I put it around here, and uh, I had a real pretty uh, green grass blouse. It was pretty, it was green, wow. it was green grass color. And anyway, and I had a beadwork necklace. Wow. And uh, I went, and my sister said, if I was you, I wouldn't wear that. And I said, why not? She said, everybody's going to make fun of you. And I said, and I got thinking, well, they might, but I want to prove her wrong. I said, no, they're not either. Yeah, they are. You, you, if I was you, I wouldn't wear that. And then my dad didn't say nothing. He just sat in there. He said, it looks good. And I thought, well, see, he's thinking, yeah, he would say that, they said. My sister said, yeah, he would say that. So, anyway, I went and got out, and uh, yeah. when I got out, I heard there was a few people went, like that to me, and, and I thought, oh, that's not good. And then I would go, and I said, hey, squaw, where are you going? To sit in the powwow. You know, and, oh, God, it hurt my feelings. I looked down, and I went to the bathroom and took it off. I shouldn't have done that. But when you're when you're 15 when you're old, that age. Yeah. 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 And I'm not going to, um, you know, uh, put myself down, but at least no. I did that. No. That's but right. I, I was telling that one guy, Marcus, and he, he it just broke his heart. And, and it's true, mm -hmm. but... You know, that's how proud I am of Choctaws. I'm so proud of them. Uh, I mean, I call my uh, family members from uh, Ardmore and Mississippi and all that, and you know, all that good old stories and all that. And uh, it, We have such rich history that uh, I just don't have no time to paint anything else. You know, you can really see your, um, how much you appreciate the beauty of everyday life in, in your paintings. But it's usually not, you know, life in 2010. What, what, what time period do you often set your paintings in? Well, uh, I've been doing some, like, pre-European time. Where they're I've seen those. Skins. Yeah. Um, some of them aren't uh, uh, to other people. 
they don't understand the stickball games. Um, it's not understood. Um, but a lot of mine is like turn of the century or in the 50s or, or in the, the 60s. 60s. That's what it 50s makes me. 50s and 60s. 60s yeah. when you were. 60s yeah. and, and maybe 70s. And I think that's a wonderful period to document because not a lot of people yeah. do, do that. Yeah. You paint a lot of women and children. Um, what, what draws you to that subject? Well, um, I guess because I'm a woman and I was a child and I have a child and uh, every children are raised by their mothers, you know, most mothers, and you have that connection, you know, uh, and especially if they stay at home. My mother stayed at home. Uh, I I pretty much just uh, lived my life off of my mother, what she did. She was, uh, um, I was telling you earlier that Choctaw women are real strong. We are, we are so strong sometimes that we're stubborn. Um, the Choctaw ways, um, the men don't discipline the children. The dad, my dad never disciplined me. It's the um, uncle mm -hmm. and the um, mother. But uh, yeah, she had uh, a lot of influence on me. And what was your question? Well, and just kind of... Oh, why know, I do mother... Yeah, that, right. that's why. Um, and also maybe just the importance of women... Um, if you could talk about that a little bit, just, you know, in terms of, you know, Choctaws or a lot of, you know, Southeastern tribes, mm -hmm. especially. Uh, the what? Uh, just the importance of oh, women. Well, um, yeah, they're, um, they're like, uh, I don't know, uh, other tribes, but yeah, the, the women are really important. The mounds, the mother mounds, uh, the the way, uh, uh, you know, the way uh, that was uh, <clears throat> built upon women. Um, the stickball sticks, the the tall sticks of the male, and the and the um, smaller cup is the women. And and um, you cannot throw a ball without the woman. Um, and the uh, the ball is the children, and without the uh, children, there's no purpose for the male and female. And the and the ball is the children, and the uh, player is the creator. So um, women have a lot of influence in Choctaw. Um, we were the first cheerleaders, by the way, <laughs> in the old days. Um, we would, uh, they would uh, be on sideline, and and if there's a good player came by them, they would switch them. <laughs> and actually, the uh, football and the basketball got their rules from uh, us. Yes. The stickball. Yes. How about titles? Are they very important in your work? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, there's time where I do a painting, and I can't think of a title. So I put on title, and there's time where I do the title before I do the painting. What What is your creative process? How How do you from the time that you get the idea? How How does that work? Well, um, I get my ideas like, well, like I'll go one show and I'll say, well, I'm, I think I'm gonna do a like uh, two little boys uh, blow gut hunting or I'm going to do a little girl picking blackberries in the field. That's how I do it. I do a different show and I want to do kind of spread it around and then I'll sit there and I spend a lot, sometime I can spend time in the front room looking outside. Um, I can sit there for hours and not even know it. And uh, You're kind of taking it, in the landscape. Yeah, sort of. yeah. And then my, uh, what you call it, uh, inspiration so high, and I'll see it, and when I see it, um, I'll come in here and get my papers back here and then get all that stuff and draw it. Uh, I do a lot of drawings, so I'll draw it, and then um, 
know, there's time where I can't draw nothing, and then there's time where it's just magic. I can draw it; just, it's just perfect. <laughs> and uh, but um, I I get that, and then I go in there, and uh, oh, I to, that's when I don't want to get no. Sometimes it's when I get my phone calls, and I'll uh, you know uh, draw, start drawing and painting, and and uh, uh, I get to where oh, I got cook supper, so I'll quit a little bit, turn my lights off and cook it. As soon as that, I'll let the dishes sit a while and get back on it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> those are those good paintings. Right. You know when you're going to do a good painting. You just feel it. You know, you know. You you know, an artist knows. You just know. <clears throat> um, I think I read that you sometimes do sketch. You, you have your drawing and mm -hmm. then you fill it in with the watercolor. Do you, do, you, do you have the whole drawing, or do you sort of do no, like a thumbnail? Well, the people, I do kind of a whole drawing. Okay. And the back, I'll just say, you know, because if I want to change my mind, uh, the uh, the watercolor, the um, you'll always see that sketch, uh, the pencil. Yes. So, matter of, like, sometimes I want to put a tree there, and I'll just do a few lines. I'll make sure it's below the horizon. Gotcha. And then that's how I do it. And and changing your mind is part of that problem solving, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's very rare that I have an image that I change. Unless some my grandkids are around, they might actually put a splatter or something, but uh, I may put a tree there or a sun or a moon <laughs> yeah. or a bird or something. Find a way to uh, lose it. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you... Talk a little bit about your brush, your brush strokes, um, and you, I guess you've kind of called it the basket. The basket yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I learned that on my own. Um, uh, the thing about watercolor painting, it's, uh, other than what everybody says, it's hard. I mean, I have art professors saying, Norma, how do you do that like that? Or, is that oil? No, that's not, you know, I'll be in blue rain and, and you know, you know, you got these characters. No, that's not uh, watercolor. It can't be. I said, yes, it is. And I said, no, it can't be. It's got to be. You got to use a pen and ink. I said, no, it's not. It's uh, watercolor. But um, I don't know. I just uh, learned from my, what it is, is it gets muddy. You know, I like, sometimes I like deep colors. And when you add it on, it gets muddy. So I, learned, I thought, well, I kind of did it on an accident. I was painting, and, and then I said, what if I do a lot of light layers? How would that look? It would make it rich and deep without being muddy. So I th I did that, and then I did it, and I said, hey, this look good. And then at first I'm doing, um, see, the Choctaws, um, we use a lot of diamonds in our um, images, uh, the baskets and the dress, and the diamond, diamond represents the uh, diamondback rattlesnake. Mm. And the reason why we like diamondback, I mean, uh, the rattlesnake, uh, the reason why we, uh, uh, what you call, uh, look up to it is, you know, they mind their business in the woods, and if you uh, mess with them, they'll strike you. Right. We admire that. So that that is on that, but uh, either way, I did, used it on my uh, painting, and, uh, and, uh, I thought that looks good, and I kept it. Then and then after that, I started doing layers, and after that, I can't go back to the regular. <laughs> can't you just can't do it? You know, I mean, right. sometimes I'll try to. I have a, a you know a deadline or something. I said oh, I don't want to do all this, but I kind of want to take an easy way, and the easy way always falls short. Because uh, I don't know about other people if they see it, but I see it, and I'm the one that counts. Right. So. <laughs> And um, actually, sometimes I think I remember you saying that uh, if it's just a landscape, it falls short too. You're not interested in just doing a landscape. Well, not you talking about just landscape? Mm -hmm. No, I don't do. Uh, I do. I love landscape, and I love Indians, but I don't. Uh, I would rather leave the landscape out and keep the Indians than to do a landscape and leave the Indians out. It yeah. just don't make sense to me. I mean, people brings life to nature. And without nature, uh, you know, uh, the woods and the trees and the, you know, without life around it, 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 it's no purpose. 
and with an Indian to the Indian not being in the woods and walking around and uh, there's no purpose for us if we don't walk in the woods. I mean, I know nowadays people's got you know their um, time and and they don't have time to do this and that and go in the woods, but with the Indian, a Choctaw I'm speaking for Choctaw is a. We have to have woods. We have to go in the woods and 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 kind of refresh our thoughts. You know, be around a, a, a place where nobody looks down on you or look up on a, at you or or uh, criticize you or or uh, thank you or anything. It's just you in the woods and 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 uh, just that is is uh, it, it, it's what I like to do. Is there any subject that you don't paint that's kind of off limits? Uh, well, um, we have this, uh, it's a story, uh, uh, it's, well, it's, I'm not going to say story, but it's, uh, it's called Konakushas. They're little peoples. Um, they're kind of special to the Choctaws and I think to other tribes. Um, that I won't paint. And there's another thing I won't paint is, um, well, there's two of them, but I, uh, one of them is um, there's this uh, school up there at the Choctaw Nation. It's called Wheelock, and the lady uh, from there uh, she um, wanted me to uh, paint the uh, building, that uh, school boarding school, and uh, said I can't do that, and uh, she thought it was going to be hard for me because I said I couldn't oh. do it, and uh, oh I, I'm sorry, you know she thought she was. Uh, thought I, I couldn't do it, but and uh, well, uh, you can do it small, and I said no, it's not that, and and she said and and she said, uh, well, is there anything? I said well, the reason why I won't do it is because in the old days the little Choctaw kids ran from that place. They have a grave by there. If you go by there, you can see the little graves, little Indian kids. Choctaw kids that was running from that place. And I said, I can't paint anything that little Indian kids ran from. It's just something that I cannot do. And um, I don't know if she understood me, but I, that was what I um, was feeling. No one told me that I couldn't do it. No one told me I couldn't. And then um, there was this one guy, I was at the show, and he was from the Union. Um, uh, high school, and their mascot is Redskins, and um, I didn't know him at the time. He was a superintendent. He came at my booth, and um, uh, he said, uh, "Yeah, we're we've got some money in, and we're kind of we're uh, doing this uh, thing. We we kind of we we chose you to uh, you know because you like to do children." He said, "So we chose you, and uh, we we kind of wa we wanted to you know we had a meeting, and and I come to." Uh, represent Union and and uh, we want you to do a, a Mary or something and, or do whatever if if this is what you do if you do watercolor do something for the school we kind of want to um, uh, bring attention to uh, uh, Native Americans he said and I said and I thought well that's nice you know I didn't know him at the time I still don't know him but um, and then I said oh I don't know, you know, I don't know if I got time, all oh, no, that, and then, then he said, uh, yeah, <clears throat> and then he kind of choked up a little bit like that, he said, <clears throat> it's from, uh, we're from the, you know, Union, uh, and I thought, Union, and I said, oh, Union, oh, okay, and he just sort of, he knew what I knew, yes. and I knew that, that uh, you know, um, and I thought, no, ain't no way I'm gonna do that. And I said, well, I don't know about that. I I, I know everything's going on, and you know y'all's mascot. I didn't even want to, you know, say it. I just said your mascot, and I know that. And I don't want. I'm I'm afraid I'm not gonna do it. And 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 he said, well, you know, I understand. And you know, we we things just gotta, you know, turn things around and stuff like that. And I thought, if you're gonna turn things around, then change the name, you know, and. Uh, but that's another thing that I turned down. 
and also commission work. I don't do commission work hardly um, because you know a person has their vision of what they uh, would like, and I'm sure it's a good vision, but I cannot see in their mind, and um, so that's why I won't do that. Right. Yeah. Merlin Mer Mer feels the same way. Well, we're going to take a look at your paintings here in a moment. Um, is there anything you'd like to add or anything we should have talked about that we didn't? Uh -huh. Nothing other than I'm self-taught. I guess that's obvious, huh? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a self-taught, and I love doing uh, miniatures. Yes. And uh, my maiden name is Norma Williams. I know my dad would have been proud. Uh, everybody thinks my name is Howard, but that's my married name. Right. I'm really proud of my Williams name. But when I started out, uh, matter of fact, I've got some of my old paintings that it's Williams. Oh, do you? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Was this uh, prior to Red Earth or? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I got married in the '79. Right. So after that, it start was Howard. But right. but prior to '79, I yes. mean, yeah. Like I was telling you about my dad sold my first. I mean, the, took my paintings at the um, reunion day. Yes. They were all Williams. <laughs> so if anybody has a Norma Williams painting, they should hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> Which there's not much out there. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and you want to just talk about this picture? Yeah, this is this painting is. I think it's like four by six. Um, it's a watercolor painting. Um, the uh, the people in the images are doing the turtle dance. The um, uh, the dresses are uh, traditional Choctaw dresses with uh, uh, regular uh, bright color clothing with the apron, and the men are wearing their uh, traditional black pants with black hats and the, and colorful shirts with diamonds on it. And then uh, they're under an oak tree, and and you can see the people in the back. Uh, you know, watching the uh, turtle dance. That is beautiful. And can you tell uh, us about these paintings? Yeah, this is my mother and dad. Um, <clears throat> uh, the um, my dad. I took the picture of that, and it, it's so much of. Uh, I mean, he's he's got a, lot, a few pictures here and there, but uh, this picture was so much. Uh, who he is, you know, he, he likes taking uh, pictures and he always wore ball cap. He didn't go anywhere without his ball cap. And uh, he, he, you know, he welcomes the picture. Um, um, he always wore a t-shirt because he was a house painter. So, you know, he didn't have to dress up or anything like that. And this other one's my mother. That was actually in a... Um, uh, group picture. It was Thanksgiving Day. You can see where she's wearing her um, uh, apron. Um, she don't like taking pictures. There's very. It's very rare that you have a picture of her posing. She's always either turning her face or it's blurry or something because she's moving. But um, this was taking a group picture in the back, and and she didn't like taking pictures. She she's got her arms folded like that. <laughs> but. Um, uh, and the wind was blowing, so her hair was really bushy at that time. But uh, that was just so much who she is. Um, and uh, that's why I used that image uh, from her. Actually, the original uh, photograph, uh, she was about uh, probably about maybe an inch and a half tall. Wow. And uh, see, when I do, uh, like, um, uh, some of my family members... Like that, I don't never blow it up or nothing like that. Um, it it um, the image is just not so clear. Right. And I I don't like to do you know I just like to do as you see it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this is also a painting called the Crossroads. Is that right? Yes, at the Crossroads. At the Crossroads. Uh, this is a watercolor painting. Um, I title at the crossroads because you, you can see the four um, roads where they meet. And this is south of Mississippi. Uh, in the background, it's um, um, sugar cane. And uh, I I uh, put the people, the two women, the men there, you know, they're parked and, you know, like it's after a long day and they're talking. Uh, uh, and you can see the tree on the left and there's like an old... Um, 
like a, a dead tree to the far left. You can see parts of it. Um, this painting I, I did in 2002, um, I, uh, you know, w when you look at it, you, you know, you see, um, you know, two women and a man, two men and a, um, and a wagon and a team. And, but then when you look at it, you're thinking, what, what I tried to uh, capture was, um, them having a long day and you can almost, you can almost smell the air, the moisture in the air. And you could you could hear them speaking Choctaw to each other, and it's just such of a quiet day. And and uh, like I said, it, it was kind of a long day, but they're done and they're just talking around. You could see the sugar cane in the back and and the, uh, the tree with the Spanish moth. Um, when I first, when I did that painting, um, I thought, man, that looks like it. It kind of gave me that view master feeling. Uh -huh. because yes. of the shadows on the bottom. Yes. And um, I look at it and I say, I want to be there. I want to be t <laughs> in that painting. And I won Best of Show with that, at the uh, Tossin and Art Festival show. And uh, I set it down and um, I looked at it and I told David, uh, I had it in the front room with lights on it and I was sitting there looking at it and I said, David, you know what, I, you know, I did a lot of painting, but something about that painting I really like. And David said, well, why don't you keep it? And I said, no, I'm, I'm going to sell it and all that. No, yeah, you're going to sell it, then you're going to spend the money, and you're going to wish you did. And, and I thought, well, you know what? I can I can keep it. And I, sure enough, I kept it. So I got it in my living room. And um, I think to this date, that's my favorite painting. You know, it's not that big, uh, but... I don't know. It's just something about it. It just kind of relaxes me and and brings me to that uh, place where things were simple and people were um, real. You know, uh, uh, not on just just you know, were, were time where they were all speaking Choctaws and I don't know. It's just something about that. I just love. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Norma. You're welcome.